Okay, um, in this video we're going to be showing how to um, use the motion direct commands. So uh, basically your motion direct commands as we, we currently have them. Um, I use these a lot to troubleshoot if I have trouble uh, with a servo or, or say for instance I get a position fault. Um, you know, I, I, generally when you get a position fault it's not the servo's uh, fault, meaning it's not a failing motor or anything of that nature. Um, the servos are pretty robust in that nature, so um, it's, if anything, it's going to be a break or uh, something on that motor that could be failing, or it could be something mechanically attached to the drivetrain. So uh, what I like to do is use motion direct commands and see if the motor will run or not run. So um, right, real, real quick, just kind of go over where they're at. Um, under your motion group, um, that you currently have, you know, you're going to have a lot more than one one uh, motor. In my case, I only have one, so I will right click it and then go down to Motion Group or uh, Motion Direct Commands. This leads me to uh, the position I'm at right here, where I'm able to um, control the state of the drive <clears throat> through the standard controls. I'm able to do motion moves. I'm able to uh, do ch control the group, um, do a lot of stuff with, with it. So um, if I have trouble with the drive, right, say if it's faulted out or if it has it has some kind of issue, um, I, then what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and try to run it in uh, the motion using these motion direct commands and to see if it's actually the, the servo motor's fault or if it's maybe a cable or if it's a drive or maybe something mechanically hooked to the, um, the you know the motor as far as the drivetrain. So first and foremost is I, I usually go down and do a motion reset, motion fault reset. I come back and after that point I cut it on. And at this point then I'll sometimes I'll, go, I'll use a jog or I'll use an incremental move. Um, let's say for instance I'll, I'll you know want to do a jog right now just to see if the motor will move right. Okay, so we issue, as soon as we issue a jog, um, it'll continuously run, but you see that the actual position is running. Um, the velocity that we're telling it to run is uh, 25 right here, so I can change that um, if I want and have it run faster, um, you know, and then come back and make sure I do a controlled stop. So in my stop, my MAS, I come in here and I do a, a change controls. Yes, I do want to change controls and I want to have a controlled stop. So I'll take the decel rate up a little bit so it's more of a basically um, a nice uh, stop instead of like a, a real solid stop. Um, <clears throat> and then at that point, uh, what we can do, uh, we can do a couple more things. You can do incremental moves, uh, absolute moves. So if I want to do an incremental move, um, I can change the uh, motion axis move up here to incremental. Um, of course, I can go um, all kind of stuff, really. Uh, you know, this is just mainly for testing, but say, for instance, if you're, you want to test the, the servo for its uh, functionality, you know, like I just did, to see if there's something wrong with it, you know, and make sure that it, it's just not a bad motor. And you're, you're at the troubleshooting phases, you know, you might want to do an incremental move. Uh, just make sure you, you know, you come in here and you put the positions in there. So in the position, uh, we'll, we'll run to 100. Um, we'll come in and uh, we'll put the speed at 20. Um, we'll go ahead and home it just so we start from a zero point. Um, but let's just see that way you can see it go up to um, the 100 mark and it stop. So what's going to happen is in the um, actual position right here in the servo, you're going to see it it actually run up to 100 and then stop by itself. Now and this is a again motion axis move command, so it's not going to continuously run. It's just going to run up until the point where it hits that position. So and at the speed of 20. So let's see. Let's go ahead and execute that. And as you see, it's running. 
and then it goes to the point of 200 or 100 and stops. So the same thing would happen if I increase the speed. See, it just got there a lot quicker. So, um, and basically it did, you know, it, so it's, it's still going for, um, every time you do it, just know it's going to, it's going to increment one, 100 points or a position of 100. So that's it right now with being it, we did it twice. It's at a position of 200. Now we could come in and make that go backwards by just putting a negative in front of it. And it's going to take it right back down. So do it again. And then it's going to go backwards. So now we can go, I mean, again, we can go back forward. So at this point, if you were troubleshooting a machine and you wanted to know if it was working or not working, if the servo was giving you a problem with position error, um, something of that nature, you could use this. And if it worked, then you would know right off the bat that it's nothing wrong with the servo. The servo is completely fine. It's healthy. Then you know you can function. You, you can actually work on something that is uh, could help, could could be the potential issue, right? So it's not gonna it's gonna let you know that you know not to waste any time on going to going to get in the motor, putting it on, and then having the same problem. Um, at this point, you know your servo is, is running. You know that it could be. Some kind of something in the in the control logics to say you know that giving you a position error, um, maybe it's it's not home properly or maybe it's some kind of um, maybe there's a, a registration input or something not working properly. So um, at this point we want to cut it off. Um, this cuts off the ability to use motion, and um, that would conclude how to use that. But the the main reasons I use the motion. Um, access the motion direct commands right here. The main reason I use these is for troubleshooting and um, or either system testing. You know, if I'm commissioning a system and I want to run it and say I want to run it and um, tune it slightly, I mean, I might may, I may use it for that too. Um, like I said, the main thing I use it for in, the, in finding out what's wrong is if I get called to um, call to a place and they have have trouble with uh, basically a servo that is just giving them a fit and they've changed the motor out and they're doing this and they're doing that. First and foremost, you want to go into ground level and you want to come in and figure figure out if it's a servo or if you want to figure out if it's the code. Well, this is one way to do that. Um, you can figure out if it, if it is the actual motor itself by by doing this. Um, if it runs and there's no problem, you don't get no errors. Then, yeah, generally speaking, there's nothing wrong with the motor. Um, you know, it's just another way to use these tools um, to have, um, you know, more tools in your, you know, in what you do. So then the better off you are, you know, you can decide, you know, what is what and which direction to go. And it just helps you troubleshooting out. So, again, I just want to kind of share that with everybody. I know people probably seen that before. I'm not sure, you know, if you have different reasons for using using this, but um, this is one one or two reasons that off the top of my head that I use it. So again, hopefully that was helpful, and uh, again, I just wanted to share it with you to uh, help spread some knowledge. So again, appreciate your time, and uh, give me some comments below. Um, let me know what you think, and if you would like to see more of these videos, or um, or what direction you would like to go. Okay. Well, again, I appreciate your time, and I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap this video up and uh, make it make some more for you. Thank you.